Yeah. So they're getting extra when they buy off of you. They pay extra, too. Oh, do they? (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know how. I'm sorry I let that out. We were going to be looking for that bargain now. (laughs) With a coupon or something. Coupon, yeah. So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. It's a beautiful morning today here in Pennsylvania, and it's a balmy 18 degrees. It's Saturday morning right now, and Plumber Jim, he's going to be up in a little bit to finish up some plumbing in the building, and then later on, we're going to head over and check out a guy that's drying some firewood in his kiln. So we got a a little skiff of snow last night. We're going to take care of that right now. This is capped because you said uh, that we We're don't have a We're not using a tub spot here. It's just a shower only. And these are air chambers for the help with um, water hammer. And this one I'm going to not cap and I'm going to take it up and over, go for the hose bib on the other, right. the front side of the building and the other side of the building. This whole thing took you like not even 10 minutes to do. Right. Not even. Right. So Jim was just telling me. A lot of these uh, shower valves don't have these shutoffs on them. I don't know if you can see that or not. So you got to make sure you get ones that have it in case this would start to leak. You can take the cover off and just turn these off and you don't have to shut everything off. All right, Jim, what are you working on here now? This is the sink we're up in, bathroom sink. I'm doing my little crimp thing so it doesn't fall. And then I'll be putting this jumper on here. This is where I'm going to be putting the test on with, with my gauge. We'll get, get to that in a little bit. All right? All right.
When doing repairs, do you find more problems with hot water or cold water, or doesn't it matter? Um, hot water is probably you're gonna have more problems with hot water. More expansion in the back. Yeah. Okay, we're about to perform our pressure test. Now, some people are saying it has to be 24 hours, but it does not, does it? It does not. This is a Coleman gauge. When it gets up to around here, we're gonna go 100, 100, whatever this compressor goes, it goes to 110, 120 pounds. Okay. Okay, which will be more than adequate. And this gauge will show a small leak within, within minutes. You gotta right. equalize all the liquid. Yep. Shut all your valves. Plug into this port. Make sure it's snapped on and start pumping. So I'm not wasting time. I think I get up around 50 pounds. I'll do a preliminary test. To see if you got anything obvious. Yeah, and then I'll stop. Yeah. If it's something obvious. Yeah, I noticed the cap over there you didn't have one. I wasn't gonna say anything and you remembered oh, it too. We were gonna trade off the <laughs> plates missing. Yeah. Is that yeah. more of the trade-off one? Yeah. He said I owe him a cup of coffee for every plate that I missed. So far it's four, I think. <laughs> he was gonna make the cap as a bargaining tool. Okay, we're at 60 pounds right now. Wow, this gauge is acting funny right now. See that? It's not yeah. to do that. But I'll let it sit down. Oh, there's a leak. That's why. I leak. hear it. Yeah, right here. Where's that? Right here. Oh, I forgot to solder that. I forgot to solder it. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, uh, you're down to two. <laughs> I forgot to solder that. Down two. What's going on, Eva? Hi. Hey. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? Mama. <laughs> Jim brought bread again. Oh, really? Good stuff. Let's try some. How'd it go last night, Eva? Good. So, how many pounds do you have in it now? Uh, 90. Which this compressor usually goes higher than that, but 90 pounds. And see that tube in the back there? Yeah, the big one you mean? Uh, the little one right here. Oh, yeah. There's no fluid in there. That means there's, it's on fine test. There's no leak. Nice. So the only leak was the one you didn't solder. That's pretty impressive. How many feet of copper, Jim? 160. 160 feet. And he asked me to go around and count all the fittings, and he guessed 60, and I counted them all. I may have missed some, but I came up with 61. I can't believe you remembered that, or you knew. Yeah, I just guessed. I guess 40-some years of this. He... Yeah. <laughs> Pressure test was a success. Yes, it is. No leaks. No leaks. Buttoning up things right now. Crossing all, crossing our T's, dotting our I's.
Does it matter how much falls on these types of drains and stuff? Quarter inch or foot fall. That's what you shoot for and on these? This piece by code is allowed to be 42 inches for inch and a half pipe. Okay. Because I think it was a question, one of the... Oh, know, was it? Yeah. And that's 30, I forget, it was 36 or something. So in our code, our code, everybody's code is different. You're allowed 42 inches before you have to have a vent. And that's quarter inch or foot fall. Gotcha. All right, so uh, we're about there, aren't we? Right, we're done. Mike's officially did all the nail plating. I missed a few. But that's all right, you did good. And um, for those who want to know, these are structural plates. When you have a bearing wall, and as far as I know, nothing in this building here is bearing yeah, nothing partitions. Neat. So if this was a bearing wall, we would use one of these plates like this and put special nails on through them all without this nail plate naturally right there's screw holes here here and to fill all the holes basically is what they ask you to do and that makes up for what you cut out for and the... that makes it structurally so it won't bow yeah. right that's when you take out uh and then they naturally make them for doubles and triples if you right. have three studs in a row two studs in a row they make them not, well, you, not cheap. You, you did a really, really nice job. I'm telling you, okay. I, really nice. We had fun. I like the look of that copper and just everything's straight and just looks great. Yeah, I'm happy. Looks really good. On to the electricians. On to the electricians, and then uh, next time you'll see Jim, at least in here, will be the. We're going to do something with the pump. Oh, yeah, the pump. When you get the wood on in that wall, we'll, we're going we're gonna to talk about a pump. We're discussing it. And, yeah. And we'll. And if he wants to get energized with water and he has electricity, yeah. we can get water in this building. Right. But that'll be the next time I come back. That's All good. Right. All right. Well, let's go check out a kiln. Yes. <laughs> so you guys probably remember a couple weeks ago, Chris came over and got a uh, basket of firewood. Right. And you brought it over here, you got it unloaded, and you have a kiln inside there. Now, we did a video a while back. Mm -hmm. Now, how long has the wood been in there? Uh, right at a week from today. Right at a week from today. Yep. Did you happen to check it with a moisture meter before you put it in? I did, and it was reading like 30 to 32 percent. Okay, mm -hmm. 30 to 32, and it's been in there for a week. Right. All right, let's open it up. What do you think? Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. How long ago did it shut down? Uh, I shut it down around 9.30, so... I can feel the heat. Three, yeah. yeah. That's where I want to be in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that water. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. What do you have on the other side of this? Um, there's a little bit of a space, and then there are uh, tulip poplar slabs. Tulip poplar? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What, what are, are they going to do with them? Sell them. Yeah. Feels dry. Wow, that does. They, they they shrunk too because they were heaping over. Yeah. You know, when we first put it in, we had to take a little bit of uh, the top layer off because um, you, you, when you uh, loaded it, it was you know there's just a little bit more in there. I thought we'd have a little bit more room. Uh, uh, in, you know, in here this thing is uh, it's a big uh, big basket. Yeah, these are the big ones. That's kind of a perfect fit for oh, that. It though. is. It is perfect. Do you sell that as a running cord? So these hold a little over a third of a cord. Which is a running cord. Right? Yeah, face cord. And you sell it that way? Yeah. So they're getting extra when they buy off of They you. pay extra, too. Oh, do they? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how. I'm sorry I let that out. We were really looking for that bargain now. <laughs> With a coupon or something. Coupon, yeah. You got your moisture meter. Yeah, yeah, I'll grab it. What kind of meter do you use? Uh, this is a Delmhurst. I forget the J2000. Delmhurst. Mm -hmm. Good luck with it. Yeah, yeah. This thing is um, it's uh, it's really nice. It will allow you to set the the wood type and then also the temperature that it's at. So it'll count for that that change. Yeah. That'll that'll skew your results if you don't have a right adjustable meter. If you got an axe handy, we'll split that piece in half. Yeah. Let's see where we're at. All right. I can shoot. You guys are a lot safer than I am. Yeah. <laughs> you see the steam coming off of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, what what is nice? This thing does a really good job of getting the uh, the core of the wood up to 160 degrees, and you need it over 130 for I think it's like 30 minutes or 60 minutes. 
and we take the whole load up to 160 to get the uh, the core all the way through. So that's why you can see that steam coming off there. Nice and dry. Yeah. And plus, that would kill any uh, any bugs or anything you'd have in there as well. Yeah. Do you know what temperature you need to get to to, to kill like black ants and bugs and things? Do you know that? Yeah, I, it's like 130, 100, somewhere between 130, 140 degrees. Yeah. Is what what they say to get it to the, the national standard. Right. Actually. Yeah, this is some killing. You'll have to show him the control center over there on this oh, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, come here, set your your number for the wood. And you can set your, your temperature, what it's at. It's been off for a little bit, so we'll drop it down, maybe 140. So then we can come in. See if I can get it here. And let's see where we're at. Yeah, 15. 15%. Want to be under 20 for good firewood. That's pretty impressive for a week. Yeah, yeah, just one week. I mean, it went in frozen right from your, just like from your, yeah. your place. And that's, uh, yeah, that's that's good stuff. That's awesome. <laughs> well, you can tell too. I bet yep. you, so your tractor, you to take a little bit out. I bet yeah, you when yeah. the time comes, you'll lift that basket right out now. Oh, yeah, I'm it, sure. It probably lost 300 pounds of weight, I bet you. Yeah. I bet you lost, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't get it off the uh, off the truck. It lifted up. The, the The springs helped it, and then uh, no. it's like, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they weigh right around. Well, that's cherry and maple. That's probably sixteen hundred, sixteen hundred fifty pounds. One of those all filled with uh, green oak is probably around eighteen hundred, eighteen fifty. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, I just talked to Adam where I get those from. He's got some smaller uh, 275 gallon IBCs. I think I'm going to get some of those next because okay. uh, that is a kind of a breaking point for most tractors. You get over, you know, 14, yeah. 1500 pound. That's a lot of weight. Yeah. Yeah, and I have the box blade on the back of this one for uh, some counterweight. That that really helps too. Otherwise, it's yeah. It'll it'll pick the back end up before it lifts whatever's on the forks. That bobcat there, it's got a nice wide stance to it. It looks pretty stable yeah. on, on hills. Yeah, it, I mean, w when you're new to it like I was when I first got it, um, so this is my first tractor ever. And yeah. uh, it, it, I was just going down the driveway and it kind of felt like I was going to like fall over, you know? Because it's you, just such a... Like a Kubota, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yours is, yeah. Right? Yours would be about that size. So that's yep. what it looks like almost identical. The tires and everything look identical, except I have a back uh, and a front loader. Yeah. Well, you got my wheels turning on this whole kiln dried firewood thing. I'll tell you that right now. You can move some lumber pretty That way quick. you can procrastinate. You know what I mean? You can just like cut it. Eat that. <laughs> you can just cut it. And... So, so, Mike, what's nice about this is I've already got, um, so we're, we're looking to bundle it too, right? Yeah. We've already got 10 pre sold, you know, so as soon as they come out, they're right out the door. Right. And just and that's just with like one customer. So, like, once we get the, the word out too, you know, we yeah. move a lot more. The problem is right now for us is, you know how much throughput we can put through right yeah we're drying a lot of slabs we're, we're booked up three to six months with that stuff yeah so we're looking at this as baffling you know to keep that airflow you know properly right um, you know set up in there so yeah we'll probably do at best probably one basket a month yeah for, for us so but it's it's better than anything else that you could put back there at least we can sell this yeah absolutely <laughs> that's impressive though 15 percent, man that's uh that's pretty nice Mm -hmm. Next time you do it, let me know. I'll get you some oak. Okay. And we'll see what it does. We'll do a little test on the oak. You know yeah. what I mean? That yeah, sounds good. Like some green red oak. It's maybe only been cut and split for a little bit. We'll see how long it takes. Like All right. Two years, right? By the air. Yeah, air like, dry. By air standards. Yeah. Yep. Look at it. Oh, yeah. So normally this would all be all be filled. We actually before we put this thing in, we had charcuterie stock from here to here, all the way out, all the way up. It was probably the best load loading we've been able to get. To. Yeah, that's but, um, pretty nice, man. That's a nice setup right there. So as Mike calls these stickers, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. This, why, those are, why? Why are your stickers fancy? They're <laughs> fluted, right? Yeah. 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 Just to allow for extra airflow. Less. I see that. Uh, less likely to get sticker stain, you know, the contact points. You purchase them? Yeah. Uh, 
I know. You'll make them. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. I'm looking at you. He's You're got the nicer <laughs> stickers, but this basket was stacked better than this one when, when he yeah. picked it up. Oh, you yeah, know yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, and this might not meet Mike Morgan's standards if they're not in line. <laughs> Melissa knows that. Yeah. yeah we've had arguments over that. <laughs> Gotta have the stickers lined up. Especially in a big stack, it drives me crazy. Look, and, well, totally. you want all the weight to go straight up and down, but. No, no, and you're, you're right. And then it's actually, there's some size behind it, too. Like, you ideally, I mean, these actually moved a lot more. These were very uniform when we put them in. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, you like they say maybe like a, a, within an inch or so variance. Yeah. Back and forth. I mean, sometimes I, you can't I see help where it, you're going with this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, Melissa. <laughs> yeah. See, right from the experts. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Well, good deal. So move the uh, the internet cafe five cable up here. Go, it's just hooked up the internet. Yeah. So, so you can control it. From yeah. Your phone. Yep. So I can right. control from my phone. Um, you can see like. Uh, we got graphs in here and basically it's just as you don't see moisture content or you know there's no internal ratings like that it's, it's either like temperature and vacuum control but you can see if there's any problems so you can look in, in like the last 24 hours your red is your temp blue is the vacuum you see where the drain cycles were we have two this is a 24-hour period we had it set up to final dry so it goes to a drain cycle every 12 hours for 15 20 minutes um, and that's just to get you know, the, everything fully dry yeah, we, we found that's really good with our slabs, um, with our kiln cycles and whatnot. Looks like it's pretty steady. Yeah, yeah. And you can see here, I think this is two weeks. Well, we had we had a, a power outage for about six hours. And what's nice is this thing, as soon as it comes back on, it detects that there was a power outage, and it'll uh, start right back up. So if I'm traveling, I don't have to come in and hit this button. Or if like, the internet comes out, or is not returned, I can't you know, log in and hit the hit the button with my phone. But, uh, it has a memory or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's an uh, auto start, which is pretty nice. But I can log in and check these graphs and um, uh, even go up and. So you can see like the, the time cycles set the, the, the air temperatures and whatnot. Yeah. I can do that from my phone. Like I was in, uh, I was in Guam for the uh, for military. You know, we were in just doing a, doing a mission out in the Pacific. And uh, I was able to like, was, uh, on our downtime, you know, just log in and make sure everything's you know, on the up and up. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. That is cool. Yeah. Uh, Technology it definitely has its places. Yeah. yeah well, pretty cool, Chris. I love it. That's what we'll do. Next time uh, you got room, let me know. We'll get a basket of oak out okay. here and we'll try that. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. What made you get into this? Uh, I was updating the uh, hinges in our old cabinetry at our old house uh next thing you know you gotta <laughs> kill you know, i gotta count that's exactly how it started i don't know how you think man <laughs> <laughs> i'm not even going there on that one <laughs> no so we actually started getting into uh bigger projects after that that's kind of like where it did start and then we got into um cutting boards and then we got into tables you know it was just like well you know you can see you know, these just, are popular yeah, yeah yeah you know what i mean it's just you know the same amount of time or a little bit you know just bigger return on your investment of time right so we're getting the tables and we're trying to find uh, places that were properly drying them you know they were saying kiln dried we flattened them hit them with the moisture meter and they're still 50 percent so they're case hardened they yeah. were properly dried and then we got bit like three or four times and that's you, ruined your you want to explain what case hardening is yeah so so case hardening is basically when you dry the wood too fast and the outer layer because you you basically um you close the cells not being able to allow the moisture to come through so then it gets really dry on the outside but the the, the center of the of the wood is still very very wet so when you try cutting it with a saw and it just pinches your blade or yeah. you know what i mean and you know it's unstable it's, mm-hmm. yeah yeah so this is one of the many drying defects that you can you can encounter and we see it we, we were seeing it a lot with you know stuff that we were pushing through our business so we decided oh well let's look into getting our own kiln you know so we went we looked at like nile and uh, several other kilns and all of a sudden you know i dry was running a special it was like a black friday special it was like i didn't think you could i know black they have Friday black deal. fridays on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then you were able to tell your wife how much money you saved well that's a you yeah know, because yeah. It was black uh, friday. yeah <laughs> and you didn't even have to go out <laughs> no 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 it was it was awesome um but no it was actually she was uh, she was on board she was like you know what let's just do it let's you know see where it goes when we didn't even have a customer base you know we just jumped head first into it and yeah and now it's self-sufficient and keep what's this unit weigh this whole thing and the overall length uh i, for, I, I think the length is like 17 or 18 foot total and it weighs 8800 pounds okay yeah so they had to have a uh, we actually 
hired a rigging company to come in and they delivered it. They actually took delivery at their facility and then um, and then transported it here and then brought up like a 10K forklift. Um, yeah. You get it off their flatbed trailer and Very nice. shove this thing on in. Well, good deal, man. I don't think it's moving any time. <laughs> no. Well, thanks, Chris. Thank you. Yes, yes for thanks. absolutely. The knowledge. All right, man. Thank you. Plumbing air admittance.